Hey guys, Max Finn here, and today I want to talk about something I usually don't talk a lot about. I'm usually always talking about Facebook ads, right? So it's always, what's the latest Facebook ad strategy? But if you've been following me for a little bit, um, especially in the past month or two, you know I've been talking about diversification, how important it is to look at other ad channels, YouTube, native, and Snapchat has been one that's come up a few times recently. Um, we got a really great rep about a month ago at headquarters in Los Angeles, and I um, I wanted to share just a little bit of like the reasoning behind why we're we're looking at Snapchat, some of the things that got me excited about it, and why I think it's something that's worth your time at least to check it out, spend 50, 100 bucks on it just to get familiar with it and see if it's worthwhile for your business. Um, so, you know, a few things. So the first is, from from my perspective at least, you know, I've spent tens of millions of dollars, probably over a hundred million dollars combined across, you know, agency on Facebook over the years. And I still don't have a, like a person that I can like reliably contact whenever I have a problem and get problem fixed. I just don't have the person. I've had people over the years that have helped to various levels, but I never had that one person I like genuinely trust and know when I have a problem, no matter what it is, I can contact them and get like, res- get it resolved within an hour. Um, with Snapchat, we have that person. So we literally got a rep right out of the gate. Um, you know, obviously I have some connections and stuff, but um, I have far fewer connections to Snapchat than I do to Facebook. Let's put it that way. And our Snapchat rep, rep is amazing. Spent an hour with me going through all of our offers, all of our businesses, giving us ideas, strategies, tips, helped us on the tech side with our Pixel, all kinds of great stuff. So from a communication and transparency standpoint, that's been great. It's been a breath of fresh air. Um, their marketing rep team, their marketing strategy team is literally right next to their their ad review team and their tech team. So I had a few ads rejected. She literally walked over and they approved all my ads within five minutes. Um, no questions asked. So that's really cool. On the approval front, um, if you're running CBD, as long as your products don't have THC, you can now run C- CBD straight sale on Snapchat. So you have a CBD gummy, a CBD vitamin, a CBD skincare product. You can run that direct offer on Snapchat right now as long as you have no THC. If you have a cannabis product, you can run that straight sale in Canada. Um, So they're a lot more lenient in terms of what type of products you can run. I know they're allowing ED ED pills and stuff on there. So um, it's definitely way more lenient in terms of the type of products you can advertise. Obviously, still plenty of ad policies and restrictions and things you can and cannot do. Um, But it seems like they're more open and moving a little faster than Facebook and Google are when it comes to types of products you can advertise on the platform. Okay, then we have CPMs. Like CPMs are insane on Snapchat. There's just way more ad inventory than there's demand right now, um, which means CPMs are gonna be lower. For Facebook, it's the exact opposite. Facebook has no more ad inventory, uh, record high demand, and that's leading to record high CPMs, which mean record high ad costs. Um, so CPMs are cost per thousand impressions. That's really the primary driver of, uh, of ad costs. Um, so Snapchat right now, I'm looking at one of our accounts. Our uh, effective CPM is a dollar twenty-seven for one of our ad accounts, and it's been about a dollar to two dollars fifty cents across all ad accounts for all industries. Whether it's info product on Facebook courses, whether it's this is financial lead gen, um, like stock tips and stuff whether it's beauty, um, that's really been the price point across every ad category. This is including lookalikes, um, and it's their kind of most prominent ad, the Snap ad. Um, so yeah, CPMs are absurd, um, costs are incredibly low. So that's that's also really great. Now let's talk about one of the big questions that I get, I'm sure I'm getting people watching this video, um, targeting, right, quality of audience, and sure, I, without a doubt, I'm not going to sit here and say like our conversion rates are the same for Snapchat as are for Facebook or Google, right? It's just not the case. Um, what I can say is we just don't have enough data yet with Snapchat. We're still so early in the fa- in the process, um, and they require a good amount of events on your Pixel fires before you can start optimizing for that event. Facebook lets you like start optimizing from day one, regardless of whether there's been one Pixel fire or a million. Snapchat doesn't actually let you even optimize for that event until you have. Um, at least 100, 100 fires. Actually, I believe it's 1,000. I, what was the, um, it was either 100 or 1,000. So again, I'm still still new to Snapchat. I'm still learning a lot of the process. But um, but anyway, so a lot of these initial campaigns were optimized for swipe ups. So of course, that, that 
conversion rate is going to be lower if you're just optimizing people that swipe up instead of actually sign up or purchase, right? Um, but now in terms of uh, targeting, I'm going to pull up the ad set builder right now and take a look. So this is what initially got me most excited. This is what got me back into Snapchat ads after looking a few years ago when it very was very, very early and being thoroughly unimpressed. Um, so first of all, you can do lookalikes just like Facebook. Um, instead of one to 10%, you can basically choose either reach or relevance. So you can make a lookalike bigger to reach more. So it's gonna be bigger but less targeted or more relevant and smaller. Um, so you basically get two choices but you can upload your buyer list, your email list, all that good stuff, and build lookalikes on top of it, which is great. Um, then you obviously have these predefined audiences. So this is where things get exciting, because Facebook pulled almost all of its third-party behavioral and demographic data from Ads Manager um, back when the whole congressional hearings thing started. Snapchat hasn't touched theirs of anything they've added to it. So they have data from Visa, Data Logics. Um, Nielsen, who else do they have data from? Um, multiple other uh, big data providers. So I'm going to go through just a few examples of some of the targeting you have on here. So obviously they have all the Snapchat audiences of people that engage with various content from do-it-yourselfers to energy and consumers to eSport enthusiasts, fast food junkies. These are all Snapchat audiences. Um, but now we're going to go down to the exciting stuff. So now we're under shoppers, data logics. We have, let's go under apparel shoppers. So we have, you know, this is from Visa, um, children's apparel shoppers, footwear shoppers, jewelry, luxury apparel, men's apparel. Those are all pretty basic, right? Then we got automotive. So automotive, we have auto parts accessory shoppers, auto service and repair shoppers, auto tire shoppers, um, compact economic vehicle shoppers, full-size SUV shoppers, in the market for a used car, um, new car shoppers, new Chrysler shoppers, new Ford shoppers, new Honda shoppers, new Jeep shoppers, basically every single car brand, pickup car, pickup truck owners, um, sport car shoppers. Then we have children's product shoppers, baby, baby uh, product buyers, toy shoppers, consumer tech shoppers, people that buy laptops, smart homes, tablets, eco-conscious shoppers, entertainment shoppers, grocery, home and garden, money minders, so people that are um, investment service shoppers, mortgage shoppers, car insurance shoppers, stock and bond investors, Visa MasterCard owners, premium credit card owners, standard credit card owners. We have mover data, so new movers, pre-movers, people that are about to move. Uh, what else do we got? Personal care shoppers, pet owners. Under personal care, we have cosmetic shoppers, gym and health club shoppers. Um, luxury beauty product shoppers, oral care shoppers, spa visitors, vitamin shoppers. We have, let's see, retail, beauty and fragrance shoppers, uh, deal and value shoppers, fine jewelry shoppers, flower shoppers, gift shoppers, holiday online shoppers, luxury shoppers, um, online subscription service shoppers. We got seasonal shoppers, so back to, back to college high spenders, back to school deal seekers, Black Friday, Cyber Monday shoppers, holiday entertainers post-holiday bargain shoppers, top holiday spenders, Valentine's Day shoppers. We have telco shoppers. So people that are spending a lot of money on a higher spend wireless contract. Um, wireless spenders are multiple carriers. Wireless spenders are no contract. Wireless spenders, recent switchers. Under travelers, we have budget travelers, business travelers, car rental shoppers, cruise seekers, family vacationers, frequent travelers, leisure travelers, luxury hotel vacationers, luxury travelers, online travel agency shoppers, road trippers, theme park visitors. Then we have all this Nielsen data, just a whole nother laundry list of targeting. Um, credit card buyers who focus on air hotel travel, any credit card, any rewards card, cash rewards, credit revolvers, people that got a new credit card in the last six months, people that are seeking rewards. Um, insurance buyers, people that shop with Aflac, Allstate, Farmers, Geico, people that have heavy, heavy buyers of insurance. Uh, we have tax service buyers by broken down by Quicken, Liberty Tax, TurboTax. We have on, under food, baked bread buyers, baking mix buyers, box dinner, Betty Crocker buyers, people that bought hamburger helper. Like it literally gets so specific. Butter buyers, breakfast meat buyers, Oscar Mayer brands, um, candy chocolate buyers, Hershey brands, Hershey Kit Kat. 
So it, it literally, I mean, literally any type of targeting you could think of from any people that shop on Amazon, people that buy at, shop at Best Buy, people that shop at um, AutoZone, every one of those is a target option here. People that bank with JP Morgan, people that bank with TD, people that go to Regal movie theaters, like literally anything you could think of is a targetable option here. So again, with Snap, what we're looking at is, okay, maybe the conversion rate's not as high because it's it's super easy to swipe, it's really quick and, and people have short attention spans. But if I know that this person is, you know, 25 to 35 year old male who is making over $200,000 a year, who is in the market for a new home, and I have a little ad I can run that shows 10 quick hits of beautiful mansions, and they swipe up, that might be a great audience for me to retarget on Facebook and Google with YouTube um, with like a lead gen ad for my, if I'm a realtor for luxury homes, right? So it's a, I think it's a really cost effective way to get people into your top of funnel. That's basically what we're looking at it for is it's a great way to get hyper targeted, to get really, really low cost and get people to express interest that we can then either get them to do a quick lead opt-in because it is autofill forms and preload um, websites or just get them to visit something, watch some content and then retarget on Facebook and Google. Um, you can also do swipe up to long form videos on Snapchat. They have um, the sequential story ads that they've been talking about where you can have, I believe 10 to 20, um, like up to 10 second videos, like in like almost a carousel format. And something like that could be great for a listicle, right? If you have if you have a multiple products, they can put together, you know, the top 10 gadgets for women this holiday season. Each one can have its own link that you can swipe up to. So there's a lot of ways we're thinking about using Snapchat right now um, for internal brands, for client brands, for affiliate offers. Um, but at the end of the day, what it really comes down to is it's important to diversify. So right now, if you, all your eggs are in the Facebook basket, you need to start looking at YouTube, Snapchat, native, Pinterest. Uh, there's so many ad channels. Spotify, start diversifying and testing, right? The, the best thing to do is you test and it fails. At least you know then, hey, give it a good try doesn't work for me. But you'd rather do that and know than to just go all in on Facebook, wait for Facebook to stop working, and then you're struggling to find something that works. So again, um, that's kind of what we're doing with Snapchat right now. Hope they give you a little bit of insight. But again, the best way to learn about it is to dive in, spend 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 200 bucks, right? Just playing around with it for your business. Get to know it. Um, there's definitely some impressive, encouraging things that we're seeing right now, especially for top of funnel and building audiences. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments. Thanks, everybody. And also, be sure to subscribe.